Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying now on this program the peace of God, the fruit of peace, as it is named in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And so we're studying the peace of God and how to enter into peace. How do you enter into peace? And so again, to remind you, we've said that peace comes from God. Peace is available to you when you're born again because it is purchased in your salvation. It's it's in redemption. Redemption, the price that Jesus paid to get you, to buy you back from, from sin and from the devil and from the kingdom of darkness. And he paid for your sin. And he paid for your peace. In Isaiah 53, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And God has made a covenant of peace with you, Isaiah 54, 10. And then we also see that we receive peace by abiding in God's presence, dwelling and remaining in his presence. And then we saw that peace comes from God's Word, Psalm 119, 165, great peace have they who love your law. And Isaiah 48, 18, I'll go ahead and say it the way we've said it, turning it around, then uh, turning the scripture around. When you pay attention to God's commands or his word, your peace will be like a river. And Isaiah 26, 3, and we really spent time on this one yesterday. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep him in peace, perfect peace, which in the Hebrew, it's actually written Shalom, Shalom, because perfect peace, the word Shalom means completeness and wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. So perfect peace is actually the translation of the Hebrew Shalom, Shalom, total, complete wholeness and perfect peace. You will keep him in shalom, shalom, in total perfect peace, wholeness, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And yesterday we were talking about keeping your mind stayed on him, as it says there in Isaiah 26, 3. Fixed. On him, keeping your mind stayed on him. And there's a lot of people who will just say, well, I just can't help it. You are lying. You're deceived if you really believe that. Because God has given you the power and authority to rule over your thoughts and control your mind. He gave you the power. He gave you the authority. And yesterday we spent time talking about, actually I taught this in a lesson in the series called the law of spiritual authority. And if you'd like to listen to that series or any other series, or if you've missed any of these radio programs, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is under my name, Cherry Campbell, C-H-E-R-R-I Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. And there you will see the categories of the postings. The top category right now is radio broadcasts, and they are listed by series title. So just look for the series, and these are available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I encourage you to listen to them. But we talked at length about something God told me to teach you. You must know your enemy. Know your enemy. Know who he is. Know what are his strategies. What are his methods of operation. And one of his greatest weapons and methods of operation is deception. He lies to you. And as we were talking about yesterday, he is called in the book of Revelation the accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Now what does he do? He will accuse brother to brother, brother against brother. 
He will also accuse man to God. Just like in the book of Job, although he doesn't have direct access anymore, but he still brings charges against you before God. He will accuse you to God. He will also accuse God to you. He will accuse God to you. He will tell you God is not faithful. God doesn't really love you. His promises don't work. His word doesn't work. The Bible, that Christianity stuff doesn't work. He will tell you God failed you. God didn't come through for you. He's a liar. And he is accusing God to you. It's exactly what he did even in Genesis chapter 3. From the very beginning, from Adam and Eve. What did Satan say to Eve? He said, did God really say that if you eat of the fruit of this tree, you'll die? She said, yes. And he said, you'll not die. So he is contradicting God. He is saying that what God said is not true. And he still does the same thing today. And he said, you'll not surely die for God knows that when you eat of it, you will be like God. Well, we've already said before his lying to her deceived her and made her forget she was already like God. Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our image And in our likeness, in our likeness, she was created. Adam and Eve were created in the likeness of God. God said so himself in Genesis 1, 26 and in Genesis three, two chapters later, Satan is, is deceiving her, causing her to forget She's in the likeness of God already. And he is trying to tell her bottom line is that God is keeping something from you. God is, is holding back on you. God is not giving you everything. And there is something that you need and that you should get. And that's being like him. And he didn't tell you, God's not telling you about this stuff. That's what the devil was telling her. That's what Satan was saying. God knows that if you eat it, you'll be like him. So that's why he's not telling you this. You just need to go ahead and eat this fruit. Don't pay any attention to what God says. You see, it was all a deception and it was a setup. And it was a trap to make her fall. And Adam, because Adam was with her and ate the fruit And together they sinned and they fell from what? The likeness of God. But they fell largely from that relationship with God that what I consider like an umbilical cord, a cord of life, the Zoe life of God that flowed in them was cut off and they died spiritually separated from God and the glory departed and they lost their position and they lost their authority to rule and reign in the earth. And they handed it over to Satan who became their Lord and their master. If Satan can make you believe him and serve him, he becomes your master. If Satan can make you believe him or he doesn't make you, but he tempts you. He, he puts thoughts in your mind and he lies to you. And if he can deceive you into believing him, then he becomes your master because whoever you believe you serve, whoever you believe you follow. Listen to me. Let me say it again. Whoever you believe, you serve. Whoever you believe, you follow. 
Yes, you can be born again, a child of God, but still believe the lies of the devil and following after those lies. That's what millions of Christians are doing. They're doing, they're deceived and they're following the lies of the devil instead of the truth of who God is. So if Satan can deceive you by telling you his lies and you believe them, then he becomes your master. He becomes your master and he's leading you around on a rope like by a, by a leash and he's leading you into destruction and away from God. So you've got to, as I was sharing with you yesterday, you've got to recognize where the thoughts come from. Satan has assigned evil spirits to torment you. Just like God has assigned guardian angels to protect you. God has set guardian angels to protect you. But Satan has set demonic spirits to torment you. And they have no power over you unless you believe them. That's the only time they have power over you is if you believe them. And so there's even a scripture where it says they swarm around me like bees. Well, that's those little demon imps. And as I said yesterday, these are the low level devils in Ephesians chapter six. Starting in verse 12, it talks about the rank of Satan's evil spirits and in his kingdom of darkness. And it says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and uh, the forces uh, of wickedness in heavenly places. Those are actually the leadership of his demonic forces. These are like the generals. The principalities are the highest rank. Principalities are the highest rank. They're the generals in command. Chief, four-star generals, etc. And then the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. That's their rankings of generals and, and commanders, sergeants, captains, etc., And then there are just thousands and hundreds of thousands and having no idea of how many actually of low level devils that have no rank. There are low level devils that have no rank. They are the ones that are assigned to individuals to torment them. And Yes, to try to stir up trouble around you. These are the ones that Paul wrote about in 2 Corinthians 12, where it says there was a messenger of Satan sent to torment me, 2 Corinthians 12, 7. And so he's talking about this messenger of Satan. That's the low level devil that is sent and, and Satan has assigned them to every human being. So you've got these assigned to you and their first and primary assignment is to torment your mind and to shoot. As we see in Ephesians 6, 16, the fiery darts or the flaming arrows. What are those? Primarily, they are the thoughts of fear, worry and anxiety, tormenting thoughts, worried thoughts. Also, Sinful thoughts, unclean thoughts, also temptations to do what you shouldn't do, whether it's temptation to get drunk on alcohol or to eat an entire chocolate pie or to go rob a bank or to commit adultery or to kill somebody. Those thoughts of temptation, those are all the fiery darts of the evil one. Those little low level devils, those are not big dudes. Those are not big dudes. Those are the little imps, the low level devils that you have uh, all authority over them. 
And so back to Second Corinthians 10, verses 3, 4, and 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. And actually, I like uh, the King James says they're not carnal, means they're not fleshly. They're not of the flesh and they're not natural. You don't pull out a gun to shoot the devil. You pull out the gun of God's word, but you don't pull out a 44. They are not carnal. They're not fleshly. They're not natural. Verse four can goes on. On the contrary, they have divine power. They have God's power. To demolish strongholds. What are the strongholds? These are fortresses in the mind. Strongholds in the mind. Satan tries to build up in your mind these thoughts. Thoughts. That get planted in your mind. And as I already said. A lot of those thoughts are their thoughts of fear, doubt, worry, and anxiety to torment your mind. They are also thoughts of, of uncleanness, sinfulness. They are also thoughts of temptation to tempt you to sin, to tempt you to do what you should not do. They are also thoughts of accusation. Accusing your brother against you, to you, bringing charges against others to you. This is where offense comes in. The thoughts in your mind of accusations against somebody. Against somebody, your neighbor, your brother, a relative, a co-worker, somebody you work with, somebody you deal with. And these thoughts of offense come in your mind. So the devil is accusing that person to you. Thoughts of accusation, brother against brother, person against person. Also thoughts of accusation, bringing you to God, accusing you to God. And also accusing God to you, telling you God is not faithful. God does not really love you. God does not watch over his word to perform it. God does not keep his promises. God failed you, especially if something does not go and work out the way you want it to or the way you hoped it would. And especially if somebody dies, a loved one, a family member or a friend dies of a sickness or a disease or an accident. And you say, God, why did you let this happen? God, why didn't you heal them? God, why didn't you protect them? Why didn't you deliver them? God, why did you let this happen? What is that? It's accusations against God. Against God. God is the only one who's truly good. He is love. And yet the devil will say, you no, he's not. He's not really love because he doesn't really love you. If he loved you, he would have protected you. If he loved you, he would have protected your, 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 your loved one. He would have healed them if he really loved you. Those are lies. You've got to know your enemy and you've got to know the strategies and the tactics and the schemes and the wiles, the Bible says, of the devil. Because John 10, 10, Satan comes to steal, kill and, dis- and, and destroy the thief. Satan is the thief, not God. Satan is the thief, not God. Not God. God is love and he is faithful to his word. And as I said yesterday, if he doesn't watch over his word to perform it, he will self-destruct. If he ever breaks his word in the slightest, minutest millionth of a way, he will cease to exist and cease to be God. And then because he's the source of all life, you will cease to exist and all life will just self-destruct. If God ever breaks his word, because it even says in, in Hebrews chapter one, that he upholds 
all things by the power of his word. He created everything by his word. He spoke it into existence and said, light be, light was. And he spoke the heavens and the earth into existence. And then in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, I believe that he is upholding all things by the power of his word. So if his word fails, all things will fail. All things will self-destruct. God cannot fail. And his word does not fail. And his promises to you have never failed. It is us who have failed to follow his instructions again and again and again. And it is Satan who is the instigator, the attacker. He comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. He is plotting against you to destroy your life. But God has given you weapons that have divine power to demolish the devil every time. And that is what the focus of this whole radio program is about. From day one, the first program we aired was to teach you the spiritual laws of the kingdom, to teach you your spiritual weapons by which you can quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. To take up the shield of faith by which, by, with which you quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. To teach you how to take up that shield of faith. How to squash the devil every time. How to defeat him. As it says also that he always leads us in triumph or in triumphal procession. And he always causes us to triumph in Christ that he always gives us the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. That's why this program is called victorious faith, because your faith will overcome the world. Your faith will overcome the devil, your faith in God And in God's word and in his promises will cause you to overcome every time. They will cause you to overcome and give you the victory every time because God's word will never fail. God, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Now I can see God is just hammering. This week, last week, it was get in his presence, get in his presence, seek him. This week is get in his word, get in his word, study his word. And we talked a, a few days ago about Romans ten seventeen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that word word is the Greek word rhema, which is often interpreted spoken word, but it's not necessarily an audibly spoken word. It's the word that speaks to your heart by revelation. When God speaks it to you, when the word comes alive in your heart, that is the word that gives you faith. And that is the faith by which you will overcome the world. That is the faith that you will overcome every trial and temptation. That is the word that you will overcome every financial problem and every problem of financial lack and need or debt. That is the word, that faith that springs up in your heart by rhema, by the spoken words of God to your heart. That's the weapon you use against the devil to cast down, as it says in chapter 10, Second Corinthians 10, 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, against God, against God, against his word, against his faithfulness, against his truth, against his love for you. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. It's that rhema word that God speaks in your heart. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, the spoken word of God to your heart, that word that you read in the Bible and it speaks in your heart, comes alive to your heart. You take that word and you do war. You do war with it 
against the devil. And you cast down every evil thought of the enemy, every lie of Satan that says you're not going to make it. That lie that says you're, you're going to fail, you're going to go down. That lie of Satan that says you're never going to get healed. Some of you are believing for a healing. You've prayed for healing. And then you're saying, why, God, haven't you healed me? You need to cast down those thoughts and lies that you're not going to get healed. And you've got to stand firm and make war with the word of God. Make war with the promises of God. God said you're healed by his stripes. God said That he sent forth his word to heal you. God said he carried your sicknesses and he bore your diseases. What is that? Second Peter or first Peter. I mean, first Peter 224, first Peter 224, Matthew 8, 17. You take these words and you war. If you're believing God for a healing in your body, you make war against that sickness and disease and against the lies that you're not getting healed. And you say, yes, I am healed by his stripes. Yes, I receive my healing. Yes, God's healing power is working in me. And you take authority over every lie and you take authority over every attack of the evil one, every fiery dart with your shield of faith up strong and you will win the victory every time. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now join me again tomorrow and remember God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.